For the newly indoctrinated, Jim Butcher's The Dresden Files follows the story of a professional wizard in Chicago. We've started our podcast as a way to help break down the series' most important moments, characters, and lore. This is McAnally's Dresden Files Pubcast by Free Flow Rambling. Conjure by it at your own risk. Welcome to the McAnally's Pubcast, brought to you by Free Flow Rambling. This is episode 2.1, The Wild West, where we are discussing A Fistful of Warlocks. My name is Tanzan, and I'm joined by Maggie. Hello, hello. And Jess. Hey. Lucio is after a rogue warlock who is holed up in Dodge City. She is accosted by a sorcerer during her search. Luckily, the sheriff, Wyatt Earp, has her back. When they put the sorcerer in jail, his companions come for him with the zombies. Earp's shooting skills keep the zombies at bay long enough for Lucio to neutralize the summoner and kill the rogue warlock she's after. So this is our first POV away from Dresden. We are set uh, roughly 200 years before Stormfront, maybe 150. It's mid-1800s. Is it mid-1800s? I thought it was like the 1890s, but maybe it's mid. We'll go with that. Mid to late 1800s? Yeah. Wyatt Earp wasn't even born until like 1848 or something to that effect. So I guess we're in the... If we're going off of history, then... 1870s yeah. minimum? Yeah, maybe. I, I wasn't really sort of disagreeing. I was just in my head that I... But, yeah. Something like... Some, some, it was the 1800s anyways, for sure. Later 1800s. So, mid to later 1800s. Yeah. We're talking a couple hundred, 150. Easy. And we've got uh, all new characters that we have not yet met in the series. This short story came out after we'd met uh, Lucio, but it is set before so we're covering it before and uh, we are happening to be in kansas not illinois yes <laughs> and that's, i know which is weird that's, for me. that's the setting because <laughs> i never i don't know for some reason i always thought dodge was a little more west or something like that i don't know what just apropos of nothing i don't think just my brain wanted to so yeah, the fact that it's actually like Southwest Kansas kind of, I was like, oh yeah, so it's like Kansas. Kansas not- is the Wild West, though. Is it? I, I still tend to think of like the far Wild West, like oh, this, California. This Dodge City, stuff. this is where like the reputation. Yeah, I know, but okay. I just, for me, Dodge City, it always, for some reason, I always envisioned it being more. To be fair, there's probably a lot of Dodge Cities in well, the United States. Anyways. Yeah. So, the scene starts off with uh, Lucio arriving in Dodge City upon her fey horse, a Nacken. Yeah. Which is really I like how she first refers to it just like my not horse. So, you kind of, yeah. you're like, oh, okay, this is a thing, but we don't really know what yet. So, really just like a water spirit who can take the form of a horse. Yes. Uh, and we learn, you know, pretty things. early on, yeah, that he lost a bet, basically. Which is why he's in service to Lucio. Yeah, and I even, I like that, because, yeah, the whole thing is these creatures, exactly, they entice, you know, lonely wanderers at night or whatever to, um, because, yeah, they appear as, like, horses wandering the moors or, you know, wherever part of the world you're in, I guess, um, and entice you to, to, to ride them or whatever. The thing is, when you get on them, you can't get off. You're like glued to them, and then their their <clears throat> method of of killing you um, is to run into a body of water, a body of water, and not emerge until you have drowned. Exactly, right. So they're not nice creatures. They seem like, oh look, pretty pony. I'm going to go pet you, and then you literally cannot. Yeah, let go or, or again, you know, you're like, oh, I'm going to ride this horse and like, and yeah. Very it, tricky, tricky. Very creatures. tricky and not cool. Like, that's just, I don't know. Dr- not that there's a lot of ways I can think that would be fun to, to die, but, you know, drowning just doesn't sound like a great option. So, 
Uh, yeah, so that's what this horse did. He thinks he's pulling one over on her, and that was, yeah, the whole bet. She's like, it's not my fault that you didn't think I could hold, like, what is it, uh, that you could ride me for an hour without bucking me or whatever? She's like, it's not my fault that you didn't think I could do it underwater. <laughs> you know? so, score one to the wizards. So either way, she very quickly mm-hmm. rolls into town and starts getting her barons. Bearings, uh, yeah. uh, looks for Dodge City began its origins in around 1871. Okay, so we will go with late 1800s. Yeah, so we, we don't go. know exactly. So it's obviously established now. So 1880s, 1890s. Just sorry. Yeah. So she rocks into the place, spends a little bit of time going from you know establishment to establishment, looking for the seediest establishment <laughs> to come across. She's after a warlock that uh as has been established uh lucio is a member of the white council uh low level member who's you know Mm -hmm. been sent off to go and track down some warlock of a sort yeah low to mid bring him to justice she she's just a warden but i mean i believe she references captain of the guard to be McCoy. mccoy yeah but uh well, she's, just, she's not a trainee, but she's also no ranking member herself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. It's, it's early for her. It's not. But yeah, I was just going to say, it's say sort of, yeah, mid-level as opposed to low level because she does send him after these guys. So she's got to be. But yeah. So um. she eventually tracks down uh, this Alex- Alexander Page, whom she is looking for in one of the establishments. But before she can make any contact with them, she is stopped by deputy right at the door who's asking for her gun. Uh, and this is Deputy Wyatt Earp. I love... I mean, if you read the little foreword that Butcher gave to this, too, he's like, I like the Wild Wild West. And, you know, he's like, this is so it always be kind of fun. And, and I, I love that he found a way to incorporate like Wyatt Earp and Doc Holliday and stuff like that into his wizard story and not make them supernatural but give them a plausible reason to be aware of the supernatural but still just kind of laconic and exci- you know just like yep that's what it is alright <laughs> well and I love that he has managed to create a completely different voice from from the, what we've from Dresden, already, from Dresden. yeah. Um, the, even the intro, speaking of the the laconic and <laughs> the, the, how I have a little bit of quote from the first one, uh, first part. It was the scenery more than anything that drove the spirit out of the body. Endless empty plains that did not much roll as slump with varying degrees of hopelessness, with barely a proper tree to be seen. The late summer sun beat into the ground into something like a bottom of an oven. So that, it. It, it keeps his his beautiful descriptions of things, but it's definitely in a different in a not voice. so beautiful it's, landscape. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it does, and but it doesn't sound like Dresden to me describing things. It's, it definitely sounds like a new character to me. Yeah, for sure. And again, without like I say, um, we'll meet Lucio. You know, a couple hundred years later, whatever, when she interacts with Dresden, um, and so. For me, I know they they talk about her coffee and stuff here. I don't think, I can't remember if they mention exactly where she's from, but later on you learn that she's of Italian descent in that, right? So hence why she's, you know, mocking like American coffee and why she can make better coffee and stuff like that, right? So again, in the books, I know her as being Italian. Um, Marsters in the audiobooks reads her with like an Italian, right? So again, it's just knowing where she's coming from and what landscape she's coming to this dry dusty barren American right like that too right is just I think that helps if you know which again is not imperative to this story but those of us that had met Lucio long before this she's no story. fellow American she's no fellow American again right just the style and the thing and just right like I can see that to me again this is very much like in her voice and her thing and, the, and, I, and I love to you how you say when she first starts the first place she gets to is um brothel a brothel and a bathhouse and Which, small fun fact here is Wyatt Earp's first wife op- opened a brothel there you go <laughs> in here so. so maybe maybe this is where uh, but, but I love she, like so yeah so she goes so she doesn't even really know she's like I go to the first sort of like she picks between like the upper class part of town and the lower class wrong side of the tracks literally split 
by the railroad tracks part of town. So she goes to the first sort of respectable, sort of businessy looking place, finds out it's a bathhouse and a brothel, talks to the woman, gets offered a job. <laughs> She's an attractive woman, and she she's knows an it. attractive woman. Yeah, and that is, and again, that's been you know stated as sort of a part of Lucio's past history or whatever. And so, but yeah, but I just I love how yeah, she goes in to ask questions, and first of all, it's like, well, are you looking for a job? And then she's like, nah, really, but I could use the bath. So they're like, all right, we'll set you up. And then she's like, all right, went where's all the the bars and <laughs> the dens of iniquity? And she's like, all right, you can try here, here, and here. Uh, I'll, I'll throw on as well, just for the different voice too is that lucio also has her own description of magic that differs from dresden's yeah and she breaks it down as to being like the different uh, like light is broken up into different colors Spect- like spectrums prisms of yeah. uh, that's how she sees magic in and of itself and that's a totally different way than dresden defines magic and that's one more cool way that you see the same system being inherently important to the practitioner themselves for how it Mm-hmm. works and manifests in each practitioner yes and yeah the style of her magic is a little bit different um how it manifests when she uses it execution is a little bit execution yeah how she sees it when she pulls up her sight and all that um her different right we've seen not a lot in just the first book but we've seen dresden talk about some of the gear you know specifically most obviously his wizard staff and his blasting rod and stuff like that right um but she's got like her sword but she uses the glasses right so instead of like fully opening her third sight and taking in everything she uses these like steampunk glasses Hmm. To just get, like, a modified glimpse of, right? She's like, I don't need that, like, when... Puts up some blinders. Yeah, like, when we just saw, you know, right at the end of Stormfront, Dresden pulling up his third sight to go into Victor's house, and, like, he got everything about the house, past, present, and future, and especially with all the crap that Victor had going on in it there, and it was, like, so overwhelming and, like, battered, like, all of his senses, and, and Lucio just, right, yeah, she takes a filter of that, right? She's, like, she doesn't open herself up to everything that's happening in this saloon. And it's important to note, too, that uh, as we go through and meet more and more practitioners through the series and we see either from their perspective or otherwise just through meeting them through Harry. Mm-hmm. Uh, the nurture versus the nature aspect of magic is also a huge part of each person, too. Like, t- how you learn it and how it manifests in you mm-hmm. really, you know, I mean, everyone can have the same mentor, but it's still going to affect everyone differently. And everyone can have, like, a penchant to fire magic, and it's still going to be a different sort of use or style or manifestation for them so that whole nurture versus nature also will eventually become very big about lucio's character as well and how we see her relationship with magic throughout the series as well and it's cool to just see this different perspective on the same physicality like artwork or music or whatever right exactly you can all you know we can all watch bob ross or whatever we're not our paintings aren't all going to look identical right you can study all kinds of branches of it same thing you can take 10 people that play the violin and have hugely different, obviously, you know, styles and outcomes. Mm-hmm. And and again, and that goes along with just the, um, the commitment to it, you know, those that put in the practice, um, as you say, nature versus nurture, those that have, you know, a natural talent towards the violin, others have a more natural talent towards the piano or the singing or, you know, things like that. And it is a neat way that Butcher... Um, explores that with his different characters and has, right? So exactly, it's all like, and and you will see again, you know, um, it doesn't touch a lot on this with Lucio, but um, how exactly, you know, Dresden always says he's basically a big brawler, you know, he kind of says the same about Morgan, like Morgan's big BB's like really good at like evocation, right? But um, it's there- like the Dalmatians scene and 101 Dalmatians with like right at the beginning, all the owners and their dogs. Yes. <laughs> Yes, yeah, how you look like here, yeah, and take on your... Yeah, and exactly, it's a lot like that, right? So um, just because Harry can do a little bit of everything, there's places where his natural talents are stronger and better applied. And same thing with some of the other people we meet, like different forms and types of magic that they're better off, but that Harry's just like, yeah, technically I can do this, but I'm really not very... Yeah, right, it's the difference between, yeah... A lot of differences. 
So anyway, so she does track down. Yes, yeah. She's warlock. She, 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 her gun is taken from her by Deputy Wyatt Earp. Uh, and she and it's a cute little exchange that they have too. Very flirty and fun. It's kind of almost reminiscent of Murphy and Dresden in that way, you know, just this uh, yeah. wizards and cops side by side, always in this parallel to working against the bad guy either way. Yes, yeah, yeah. The mortal laws and the supernatural laws or whatever there. Yeah, two sides of a coin. Bad guys are good at breaking the rules no matter who creates them. That's, (laughs) well, that's true. Yeah. Good point. That's kind of what makes them bad guys. It seems like he's also a member of SI in a a way because he is, has his own knowledge of the supernatural already. Yeah, so it, she... It, it comes out as it goes forward in the story that he is aware of magic practitioners after uh, uh, Venatori Umbrorum. Exactly. Which is a secret society that we do not know much about other than that they have somewhat been an ally of the White Council as long as they've existed more or less. Yeah, definitely a and while. It's uh, basically a secret occult Secret, 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 secret occult organization just meant on protecting yeah, mortals from the supernatural. The, yeah, and they have, you know, a few practitioners, but they're not necessarily. Whereas the White Council of Wizards, you gotta be a pretty substantial yes. wizard to be a part of. The Venatorium Brorum has lots of just plain Jane mortals they just are aware of <clears throat> and working with. So they do have, yeah, obviously, some practitioners and stuff to help them out and you know, make that a little bit easier in their cause. But yeah, so yeah, not, one more parallel to yeah, SI being occasionally in the know. Yeah, and just flipped because now you've got the man being the Wyatt Earp and mm-hmm. SI and the wizard being the female. That's, yeah. But yeah, just a cute thing where he's like, ooh, this is a pretty hefty gun. And she's like, yeah, but you're 20 bucks, I can outshoot you. And, <laughs> you know, all this kind of stuff, right? Sort of makes it known that like... 20 bucks is a lot of money back then, too. Yeah, that's a that's big bet. That's <laughs> a decent bet, yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, just kind of establishing that like she's no sort of frail, feminine, floozy, you know, like, yeah, she's there and she knows and he respects that. And he's like, all right, yeah, I believe you do know how to handle yourself. Sadly, before the flirting can continue, uh, (laughs) uh, she does see her mark her Alexander Page, uh, who happens to be at a table with another three... um, Sorcerers. Sorcerers. I mean, she quickly pegs them all to be warlocks. Yeah, because she glances around with her super specs and... And sees this of them. And as we know from Victor Sells and Stormfront now, warlocks are basically just wizards gone bad. They're traitors. They are ugly, perverted... Black magic users. Black magic users, right? White magic, yeah. And and, and just like Morgan, as we saw, it's uh, a little bit black and white, just instantly like, how dare you be on the other side? That's it, like... (laughs) Yeah. Instant, instant, uh, not apathy, but uh, instant revulsion. Revulsion to them, yes. There's really no judge, jury, any of this sort of thing. It's, there's <laughs> certainly for the Wizard White Council. You're a warlock, you are the enemy, you will die now. Just draw that line right and there. And as she's yeah. coming up with a plan, although, in all fairness, we do find out that, you know, Alexander Page. Did do some pretty serious stuff. <laughs> I mean, he was. <laughs> she doesn't know about the rest of them at the table, though. No, she doesn't. Well, no, that's true. Just, yeah, she's getting the dark words. I got you talking about in general. In general, yeah. Yes. She, yeah they no. Alexander Page judge. has a bad rap sheet. He's. Murdered his girlfriend like, and her parents. Yeah. yeah. Apparently, a little unrequited love there, so. <laughs> Not even a girlfriend. He, just, no, yeah. Well, yeah. Some he murdered a girl. Someone and her he, parents. yeah, someone he wanted apparently to be his girlfriend. She apparently didn't feel the same way. So, you know, like therefore the whole family must die. Like, yeah, like anyone that can't take rejection. Next well, time, raise your daughter to love me. That's yeah, <laughs> yeah. Took it out and, and yeah, killed them in unpleasant ways that we don't need to dwell on. It was just yeah. So that's why yeah. And then she finds some keeping company of a few others. So then she's like, well, great. And so yeah, she's coming up with her plan of attack. Turns out there was a fifth, <laughs> and he's a—he's uh, 
been much better to conceal his weapon than she was at the door because yeah. well he's got this little little derringer of those little mm. tiny guns that the girls all like they hid still in their shoot purses <laughs> they still shoot but yeah. I mean again she went in with her sword and gun strapped to her hip he obviously had this little tiny palm it in the palm of your hand kind yep. of gun that yes a palm it gun a palm it gun a palm gun uh, yeah. And he's got himself a British accent. No, he does not. He's he got himself, himself a German, German accent. accent. Awkward. Yeah, a little bit. That's I okay. thought this was. Yeah, it went the other way. I see. Yeah. My bads. That's okay. It's all good. So this is the German guy. <laughs> <laughs> Unaware that he did his own work. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and he, uh, he quickly apprehends her or tries to. He threatens her into basically having no choice but to come with him. Uh, and she is unfortunately out of options other than the fact that she notes that Wine Earp has also disappeared from the room. Yeah. And is very quickly found again when his gun presses against the back of Mr. German Skull. That's right. Yeah, it doesn't leave her a lot of options to react, and he's like, my buddies are gonna... Because uh, I think that's it, if I recall correctly, it's as soon as he jams the gun up against her side kind of a thing, then the others all, like, quit their game, like, instantly. Right? You've so, been fooled, lady. You, yeah, exactly. They know right away their guy has her, so they're all coming down to... So, yeah, she's feeling a little surrounded, not... Well, and they, and they had quite expecting... Yeah, they were expecting her, yeah. They, not she quite was, as soon, but they were expecting for a, a warden. One reason or another, yes, they yeah, were. They knew they were being tracked. They knew someone was coming for them, just, yeah better time than but yeah so yeah so basically yeah they've, they've definitely caught her sort of unawares and at a disadvantage and she's like yeah crap I'm gonna have to go how do I get out of this and realizes yeah and again that's just a great little quirk into Lucio's mindset of again whether it's like you know her personality or her training as a warden or whatever that for a second she's like shit even the deputy's gone and then she's like wait the deputy's gone <laughs> and for a second she's like wait that might not be a bad thing right doesn't assume like oh shit bad time to take a bathroom break she's like ooh this me um, she's she's very good at the battle plan she's battle very good at the strategy. battle plan yeah she, it she comes up exactly. in the rest of the story she really she, does lay out a plan quite quickly and mm-hmm. uh, effectively and efficiently yeah yeah, she, she thinks a few steps further than just than Dresden does. <laughs> oh, by a thousand steps, <laughs> he's definitely more of a planner than our boy is. He's more of a yeah. In comparison, a she's basically got everything that she will ever do with Dresden planned out, and he's not born yet. Like, yeah. In comparison, yeah. <laughs> she's definitely more of a big picture kind of gal. Yeah. Than so, spur of the moment. Yeah. So yeah. So Erp shows up. He's got his gun against. Uh, this German man's face, and they very quickly and again, the, turn the tides. The the picture painting, right, where she's like, "Oh shit!" And then, oh, that's it, because he realizes all like the dancing and the the noise of the the pub, the saloon has all of a sudden gotten very quiet. So everybody else is suddenly right. And yeah, because the guy's like, she's like, "What are you gonna do with me?" And he's like, "Nothing good." And it's like, "Oh shit!" Realizes like that came out clear. There's no other noise, and then you just hear that metal ratcheting right so again you just get that really clear like old west vibe of just this big ass gun just going oh so again it's just right i find again very involved like you can just really feel it really picture it really you know get the feel of that very classic (laughs) so the two of them escort him to jail yeah, and he's like, yeah, he does his classic, like, oh, fuck. <laughs> his Bitch. buddies, meanwhile, don't know where. <laughs> yeah, they just, like, peace out. But, yeah. yeah, I guess Earp has enough of a reputation so far that nobody else wants to get involved. And they're like, yeah, this is looking like it's going to be bad news. So they just let it go. And, yeah, yeah, Mr. German goes quietly along. And this is where we find out that, uh, like I mentioned before, that... Wyatt Earp has knowledge of the wizarding world. Right, this is when he mentions he's part of the Venatory. Yeah. Umbor- Umbrum. 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 Yeah, because she's like, oh, you're not going to be able to hold on to him or whatever. And he's like, oh, what, on account of like the magic? And she's like, oh, you know. He's like, yeah, I, yeah. So he's like, don't worry, the cell's warded. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you can see Mr. German guy's a little bit like, like he's still pretty cocky, but you can tell he's a little bit like, you know like okay and then he's like no whatever whatever I still got this it's fine um 
but yeah, I like how how they do their quick little chat back and forth about what their options are. They're like, yeah, they're gonna come for you, and she's like, this place got shutters, and he's like, yeah, and he's like, well, I guess I'll put up the shutters if you want to make coffee. Uh, and he's like, and you probably don't want me to make the coffee. And she's like, yeah, God, no. Um, he's like, great. Sounds like we've got a plan. <laughs> but I didn't already get like that's that little sort of Dresden-y humor there again. Like, okay, I'm going to close the windows and you're going to make coffee. We got this. <laughs> and break. <laughs> and break. That's, that's all we need for now. We're good. <laughs> we got us the start of a plan. And they do. They start to prepare for a shootout. Wild West. Uh, uh, unfortunately, as the night progresses it becomes very clear that a shootout is not their biggest <laughs> worry no yeah this uh german and friends um are warlocks but of a particularly scary degree particular flavor and it soon becomes clear that they are dealing with necromancers yes yeah which are Super big no-no. Like, there's Bang. being a warlock, and then there's being a necromancer, and that's just, like, extra cherry on the top of the cake of the illegal, traitorous, bastard, bad apple. Like, Robin Lane. Crush instantaneously. Genie laid out for us in Aladdin. Can't bring people back from the dead. It's not pretty. <laughs> Don't want to do it. So, yeah. Yeah. Raising up bodies is a bad. That definitely does not fall under the white magic scope. <laughs> it just just leads to all kinds of... Nope. Right, and then as uh, we learn throughout the story is that there's a beat coming from somewhere. There's a cemetery. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very nearby. And, yeah, a uh, real, real place cemetery, real boot hill, real Dodge City, all that good stuff. Um, and, uh, you know, armed with a deputy and a water horse. Uh, yeah, against those, those you know, are five uh, warlocks. <laughs> well, and one uh, of whom is detained. One of them. Uh, well, another great line from from Erp here, as when they first see what's coming at them, and he's like, "Damn!" He's like, "I didn't like the look of these guys the first time I shot them." <laughs> he's like, "They don't. <laughs> you know? They have not improved much, so yeah. Being dead does that to a person. <sighs> no, but the only good thing is that Lucio kind of does a quick um, testing of the waters and ascertains that these are not your full on top of the line mega zombies. They're just kind of quick and dirty reanimated. So at least they've got that going for them. They can still kill them horribly. There's a lot of them, but they're and a little not, bit easier. They, yeah, they counted what thirty ish of them, I think. And about says, something mm-hmm. like that. Something like so. So plenty to to get the job done. But at least they're yeah, they're just sort of um, and really like this is like. The shitty thing about the olden days is that they'd bury you with all your guns and shit. <laughs> <laughs> Nowadays, we, like, pass it on to our ancestors and put it in museums. But back then, they were like, let's put this just in case they rise again. They're going to need to defend themselves on the other bury side. Bury you in the gun zone in the hole. Yeah, yeah, that's true. We don't know how many of them are sort of armed, armed that way, aside from just... Um, but yeah, so Erp not as familiar, not as well versed in, and she's like, yeah, he basically just raised a bunch of corpses. But you know, headshot is your best bet. That usually takes them down because they're not the super mega zombies. They are just, and also she's like that that drum beat we hear. That's the substitution for their heartbeat. So if we can take that out, that'll cut the connection to all of them. So at least they're good. And yeah, he's strapped on like his seventy two guns. You know, and he's got. <laughs> couple of pistols on each hip and he gets his rifle and then that's when he when they first because because um the brit britain does come to sort of try and negotiate first after making them wait all night that's the other thing why it's like i don't really i'm not really down with all this (laughs) like they're geared up they're ready to go and then it's just like (laughs) like they wait until like just before dawn (laughs) like that's like the worst i'd be like me man that's like the worst tactics like don't fucking make me wait all night Something's, yeah. <laughs> Although, you they know. They might have had a nap, you know, had some dinner first. There's a lot say, part of, the, of coffee. Part of it is the waiting game. It <laughs> it's, hurts it's so much more. So much more than anything. And I'm like, yeah, I guess, you know, Lucio and Wyatt definitely seem to have, you know, the cooler heads prevailing thing. They probably handled it much more gracefully than I would have. But nonetheless, so yeah. Um, so and yeah, again, so when the. When and, and as uh, 
put into this scene. You see how quickly Lucio is. Here's the facts. Here's the plan. Go, go, go. Like, yeah. Unlike Dresden, who's very much like, all right, I'm going to blow up the door with fire and then we'll look at the cards then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is very much like, okay, you're going to take the headshots and I'm going to head to the roof and we're going to look for the jump beat and we're going to like do this and the horse is going to do that. It was like, well, yeah, know. her pre planning because that she set up a communication spell with, with this. I thought that was so cool. Right. Like, it was much different, like more elegant m- use of magic. Right? This is where, yeah. This is a little bit more. Elegant, a little more forethought put into it. Forethought than, entirely. Than Dresden. Even well, a lot of the time, Dresden says, he's like, I could have done this if I'd had more time, but I didn't think about it until just now. Right? <laughs> no, I was going to have to. Yeah, exactly. Right. So, yeah. So she's got exactly, and she's had him, her normal everyday horse, randomly scout out and figure out where the other, because, because, yeah, because the Britain guy came and tried to negotiate and tried to make a deal that would sound appealing to Earp and why he was there helping out his buddy in the first place. And yeah, it's like he goes, he's got like the big sawed off shotgun or something then. And basically like, again, right, stands just to the side of the door so we can talk to the guy, but not going to take a shot if, if the warlock does anything, but he's got his gun planted roughly center mass of where you know a man standing on the other side of the door and as they're talking to you like shift slightly so you're like again because he was he was out of like to the side of the little talking window thing so i'm like i don't know is that just like like him pulling out his fancy like old west sonar like he's just going based on where this guy's talking from or did he have more of a line of sight on him to line it up but regardless um um, but yeah, when the guy, he's like, yeah, basically I'm going to count to 20. And the guy's like, oh, um, sh- uh, uh, okay, well, how about this? And he's like, mm-hmm. 19, 12, 20. 13. <laughs> yeah, and the guy's like, hey, fine, you're going to regret that, you know, we'll give you half an hour to take our deal. And basically runs away like, shit, that didn't quite go to plan. Um, but yeah, so she figures and out. And you've got German guy the whole time as well giving his snarky little, like, just smirking away. You know, like, yeah, he's like, you don't know, you're raising blah blah blah. This is nothing. Ha ha, they're gonna come get me. And then and the then worst at- sort of captive. <laughs> yeah, and then after this, um, when they realize was it right after the guy came and talked to them? Or was it once Yeah, because they didn't have a lot of time once the horde started coming, so it must have been right after guy comes to try and negotiate and and German guy's a little less smirky because now they've like hogtied him and gagged him and she's drawn a circle around him and cut right. him off from yeah. all that so they're like ah and yeah then he's kind of like oh because yeah before then he was totally sort of smirky and arrogant and like whatever hard to smirk when you've got a gag hard to smirk, yeah when you're bound and ganged and trapped in a magic circle he's he's yeah he's not as happy anymore he's still pretty cocky but yeah He's a little more pissed off at them now. He's, yeah. So, so uh, um, the Nakin, the Nagin, the Nakin? Nakin. Nakin and Erp uh, basically take on the zombies, leaving Lucio to the warlocks. And yeah. as she says, too, like, this is not her ball game, you know? She's like, I once saw McCoy, head of the wardens, wardens. wardens you know, take out three or something like that. But that was, like, insane. And <laughs> he's not here, and I can't do that. And... She's, she's got, got four, four to, yes she's plus like captive <laughs> yeah she's like yeah i could have done the one maybe the two mm, three warlocks <laughs> yeah i've only seen I've three accomplished one. once by like one of our most powerful guys and i've yeah. got four plus a fifth yeah plus yeah he's wound up but um but yeah even that was nice like again just the right so so Earp has, humility. like, swapped out. Yeah, humility. <laughs> Humble. But he's, like, swapped out some of his guns and, like, loaded up for taking on, you know, this instead. And she's, like, he's, like, right, here's where he's the professional. He's not, like, bam, 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 like, panic shooting or whatever, right? She's, like, he's calm, cool, collected. Oh, his uh, repeating rifle, that's what he switched out for instead of the shotgun, right? So he could keep going yes, the ever professional gunman the ever professional gunman right and she's like yeah and she's like meanwhile she jumps out like knocks a couple and she's like meanwhile well it took me like one shot with her webley or whatever he still managed to get three even though he seems like he's completely taking his time to like line up his shots and not miss and but still right so so yeah man's man, man can handle a gun <laughs> definitely and i think uh we forgot to mention too that it is noted that these uh as they put the German under arrest, he's part of a Thule? The Thule, Thule Society. Society. Right. 
which we learn that all of these warlocks are a part of, and they are, uh, to a degree, they are the opposite of the Venatori. Umborum. They are basically, you know, as as astute in the occult and have been around for potentially as long as the White Wizard Council. However, they have always been a foe to it, you know. They are a foe as much as the Venatori yeah, are Yeah, they're interested ally. in the necromancy and the dark magic. And the dark and magic that, and that is, sort of uh, thing. Yeah, so yeah, they're all about. So yeah, I think maybe that was it. Maybe they recognized... I can't remember, but he had a... A uh, symbol of the Thule or something when they arrested yes, him. Yes, so. that's that's yes. a part. Skull, uh, oh yeah, the twisted a warped twisted skull, skull with thingy the, with the, with the crooked the, cross. Yeah, with the slash suit or whatever. Mm-hmm. And that was how. Yeah, that was how Wyatt Earp was like. Yeah, magic and shit. Right? And she's like, oh yeah, dude. Um, yes. So. Yeah. So they're part of this. So yeah. So that's why they know they're coming. So yeah, I, I, I love exactly. She goes. Like, she takes a couple shots just to. But basically, yeah, Earp's just dropping them. The horse is just like, I'm just gonna jump in and smash around and, and trample a few. It's like, you know what? Y'all got that. <laughs> Were. That's that's fine. Although she does jump on him then, and he doesn't. The the Carl to the roof, Carl to the Carl. Roof. I know. And again, I'm like, you wonder where I with have, a K with a K. Carl the K, right? And you're just like, is this just an average like these entities just have you know regular names like, or is it part of like um um like some longer mystical magical sort of like. You know, the Kraken or something. We just call him Carl for short. Like, you know, like, again, it just sort of makes you stay tuned. This is where you guys want to sign up and become, like, patrons on our Patreon. Because hopefully this is where we're going to add all these little extras. We answer our own questions. Where we answer our own <laughs> questions. And, right, we, we throw the teasers out here. And then we will have things where we will look up the... um the knockins and what they are and where they heal from and da 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 so yeah definitely if you like and you want to know more please support us join us on patreon and we will get all that stuff for you speaking of patreon we're going to take this minute to talk about it we want to thank patreon subscribers for your generous support it's people like you who help us to do what we do If you're not yet a Patreon subscriber, sign up today and get bonus content, kick-ass merch, behind-the-scenes outtakes, and more. Sign up today at www.patreon.com slash freeflowrambling. By the way, we've done the research and have an answer. If you'd like to know why Carl is named Carl, you need to subscribe. Uh, but anyways, Carl. But yeah, she as once he's done kind of charging and trampling a bunch of them and kicking them out of the way, she she hops up all cool Western style, leaps onto her her horse like seventeen hands high, like it's a big horse. And like Lucio says, she's not like she says Earp's not much bigger. She's six footish or close to it or whatever. But still, that's seventeen hands. Is- well, not just mention that, but once he loses his form, he becomes even more enormous. Once he st- forgets his yeah he loses his his, 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 his horse disguise yes he becomes even more massive yes yeah bigger and wider and stinkier and stinkier yeah fetid horrible yeah but basically yeah he's the one that gets he basically just goes bounding up the sides of these buildings he's big enough and magical enough that at a leap he can hop onto like a balcony and a roof and then back across to the other roof that she needs to get to where he already um, had pinned them as, as setting up. So so she kind of crashes the party and does so not bad. So you got the one guy in the middle. And this is, again, she doesn't describe it a lot, but you've got the pentacle happening. Or no, the um, pentagram happening, which is different from the pentacle that, like, Harry uses. So Harry's is a five-pointed star contained within a circle and it represents your five elements of magic like body spirit mind magic all of that this contains that it's a pentacle not a pentagram does it yeah there's no distinction in this particular instance. okay okay um because i thought that was the distinction between harry's pentacle is that anyways his is all the points are contained within the circle which is symbolic of contained within and shaped by 
like a mortal human will. Whereas the difference with this one is the points of the star are exceeding the circle, allowing for like chaos and entropy and all that, right? It's allowing it to sort of wreak havoc and not be as as contained and um, control over, you know, it's not being wielded and... A and symbol of chaos and entropy unbound by the circle of will and restraint. Yeah, exactly. So... Her little love, lover's quarrel murdering warlock Alexander Page is set up in the middle and he's got the drum beat going for, for all the zombies. And the other three, so we've got... <laughs> Who's got the beat? Who's he's got, got the beat? <laughs> <laughs> Page does. Alexander Page. Um, so then you've got Britain Guy at one point of a triangle and the other two basically nameless... Cohorts. Fool, remember? Fool. You fool, you! <laughs> um, so yeah, they're kind of in a triangle around, and she pops on the scene and starts wreaking havoc and disrupting their little ceremony. Stabbing and throwing. And <laughs> a little stabby, a little throwing, a little, yeah. So slicey, it, slice. A little slicey, slicey. So something interesting. So we've had Morgan mentioned with his sword. Um, and carrying out the Doom of Damocles and and all of this. And Lucio also has a nice shiny silver sword. And turns out the swords um, of the Wardens can cut through enchantments and magical spells. And boy, ain't that a, high, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a nifty thing to have when you're going after bad magic guys. So, yeah, so she's got a little advantage. She does start cutting through yeah. them. She does start cutting through. Yeah, so, I mean, sword does your everyday basic job of a sword which is useful and great and has the added bonus that when they start slinging stuff around she can actually break spells and cut through things as well so she's got her own defenses you know her own shield and and defensive magic she's got her own um attacking and offensive you know she shoots the fire out and this nice little like laser beam of fire as opposed to dresden's big like barfomatic of just spewing right Again, she's got more um, finesse, more talents, more practice. <laughs> but restraint. Restraint. Yeah, she's got it down to this nice discipline. little there we go. discipline. She's very she's disciplined. disciplined. Very disciplined. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so she takes this nice little, you know, laser cutter fire beam and directs it, and still just as vicious and just as as um, effective, but different style. Um, um, but yeah, manages to she takes some she, hits. She does manage. Well, she takes some hits, but she does a, a fairly effectively manage to work her way through the two unnamed warlocks. And yeah, as Alexander is their due, Page, being right? unnamed, you know, red, red shirts. Shirt. We're just gonna <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, fine. Yeah, okay, zip, zip, zap. Yeah, okay, you're dead. And then yeah, she's got the ones. The ones that have names are the ones that are going to be more trouble and are more trouble. And, um, you know, a very cinematic moment right at the end of this is that you know her struggle with. Alexander Page, as he's attempting to continue to drum through this onslaught around him and her <laughs> own attacks against him, is that, you know, she gets a pretty fatal hit on him, uh, but he gets one on her. Yeah, she figures he, he's done and goes after who we learn, Gravain. The British. The British guy. Um, and almost, get again, doesn't really, um, he's not expecting her to be as... Good. As good. Yeah, as effective as she is. Um, and she almost gets him, and then sort of in the last minute, he decides, okay, yeah, no, maybe it's better to just cut and run. And and she and does take note before this that he's got a clear... Like, he's good. Like, he's not just some little... Yeah, he's not rude. some namby-pamby trainee. Uh, further, I'd like... Um Further, I'd felt the power of Gravain and the Britons strike firsthand, and the man was no half-trained warlock, or even a senior su- su- senior sorcerer of the Thule Society. Strength like his could only come from one place. He was a wizard of the White Council. Yeah, so he's not even some up-and-coming wannabe like Victor Sells. He's no accidental stumbled into the occult and yeah he's he's got the training and the power and to have gone through 
the white council and decided to yeah i mean it's position it's yourself kind against of the them. equivalent of of it's you kind know, of an ultimate fuck you, really. Well, it's kind of like being like a, a priest or reverend. You know, you've signed on, you've taken the vows, you've, and then you suddenly become like a Satan worshiper. You Delivered know, Satan's baby. You, yeah, right. It's it's pretty much tantamount tantamount to that as far as they're concerned. Yeah, it's, like, it's one thing to be kind of tricked into a cult, and it's another to have fully known what you were stepping into. Yeah, and like wanting it. You've had the training very specifically of this shit's bad. Don't go there. It's against the laws. Whatever. And to purposely choose to follow that path, anyways, again is just worse to her. Right? right. She's like, dude, not cool. So yeah, so she so knows during she's a all of this, weight. yeah, Alexander gets his hit on her. So yeah, she goes after right. He Gravain, you know, attempts to flee. Attempts to flee, goes off the building, and she runs after trying to get. And so while she's preoccupied with that, thinking the guy she killed was you know killed. dead. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> surprise. And he's, yes. I'm gonna shanks her. <laughs> yeah, basically. And it's uh, a little bit brutal. Yeah. I may be going to hell, but I'm going to take you with me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, <laughs> so dramatic moment. So I dramatic. love it. Very old I love it. Dramatic, <laughs> yes. You've you killed me, bitch. bitch. You've and killed me, bitch. But what? I won't go to hell alone. It's really like like uh, S- Mufasa and Scar, like Edge of the Cliff, you know? Like, long live the king. Like, he's like, he's positioned himself. Uh, at, at this point, I think she's fallen. He's now above her. He's leaning into the... Yeah, with sword. She, he's like pushing it further into her, in whichever positioning they are in. He's leaning on the sword. Yeah, it's like the edge of the building or something. Because she looked over to see yeah, Ravain so. go down or something. So I think, yeah, I think that's how I picture it in my mm-hmm. head. Is, is he's got her pinned up against like the edge there. Yeah, the edge of and the he's building. Continuing going over. to sink this blade into her. Uh, but you know he's when you're, throat. yeah, well, yeah, and you know, unfortunately, when you expose your head as Lucio did, occasionally it also exposes. The other guy, because uh, Wyatt sees an opportunity to shoot, and uh, he really makes sure Alex dies. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so from like, his position just on the as ground, he starts to 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 uh, spear me with the blade. His head just kind of explodes in a fountain of gore, and and it's nice because you know we don't it's really nice. know what uh, <laughs> Wyatt was doing on the bottom, <laughs> but when Lucio managed to uh, stop Alex. The drumming stops. So he did have a moment of like, that's true. Okay, yes. I'm good. Like, let me set up. Look, let me look at the top of this building. And hey, I see a head. <laughs> yes. And that was the thing is that Lucio couldn't. Or was it the horse? The horse, because because Carl jumps up on the knock and goes up with her. Right. He's the one that carries her up to the roof. So he makes sort of a bolt. But while the circle that Alex is in is up and running, Carl, being a fae entity, a magical entity, cannot cross that magical barrier, that circle that has been put up. And like Lucio had mentioned, she'd had one ready in the in the sheriff's office too, which they didn't end up using because they ended up going out to meet the zombie horde and she drew another one around uh, Kemmler, who we learned is the German guy. But but yeah, this the horse cannot physically interrupt the circle because that's exactly what it's there for is to keep out magic. But once Lucio, Lucio has dispatched the other couple of schmucks, and is battling with Gravain, she gets hurled into the circle, and her very physical human, human mortal form has no problem breaking that barrier and disrupting that. And then, yeah, when she's in there again, the yeah, when, when she tries to kill Paige, <laughs> that exactly, he has broken the drumming, and that has lost the connection between all the zombies, at least. So, well, yeah. Why it's got his time so, to so why shot and yeah, wait for a moment. Like, no, yeah, nobody else is down there, because all the other wardens and everything they didn't have any other buddies down there with it they're all there so yeah so that completely ended his assault and left him to figure out what the hell was going on that does save lucio probably lots of lights and sparks and (laughs) fire (laughs) flashing around on the Hmm, where'd they go (laughs) but as much as you know that does save lucio it also gives uh mr british a chance to escape with mr german who again yeah now we know is gravain and kemmler yes Yes, yeah, because mm-hmm. once it's all, yeah, he did manage. The dust settles quite literally. Yeah. In <laughs> well, and and 
I don't know, half rescued himself because that's the thing. Because well, scraped himself. Well, out yeah, out why? That he basically was willing to skin himself alive to get out. So yeah, he, it's yeah. I don't know that that Gravain actually got to Kemler. It may have been his intention, but whether well. he just ran for himself at that point or whatever, it seems like Kemler. Either way, both of disappeared. Had gotten yeah, either either fully mm-hmm. out on his own or very close to it, and uh, yeah, just enough skin to do a tracking spell with. Thankfully, <laughs> at least yeah. Yeah, and we get a mention of Doc Holiday. Why uh, Earp's like, where is he? Hurry up! So, <laughs> called for backup. Unfortunately, he didn't get there in time to to make an appearance. But but it's funny. I like how he mentions like when he first mentions he's he's in the Venatory, and he's like, I'd show you my my amulet or whatever my token, but I lost it in a card game or whatever. And then a little while later, when he's like, "Damn it, where are you, Doc?" You know, and, and you'll she's like, like him. Oh, he's friendly. got <laughs> yeah. And he's like, yeah, a nice guy like him. He's got two. Two two uh, amulets or whatever. <laughs> One of them you won in a game of Faro. You know, you're like, oh damn! Like you lost it to your buddy and you still don't. <laughs> it's like your 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 badge, your identifying symbol. He's like, no, buddy, fuck you. You lost it. I got two now. <laughs> What happens when you're? I mean, these guys were you betting twenty dollars. Bet. Well, they were clearly like they made big bets. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, fair, but um, but yeah, but that's so, you know a great little nod to that. I love that he chose the and wild was able west. to set it there. Yeah, um, and the beautiful thing about wizards is that they are long lived and and you know have an average lifespan of a good three to four hundred years, provided you're not you know Dresden. <laughs> um, <laughs> Still alive, yeah, still as a alive or war, yeah. But you know, hurling yourself into again, as as Morgan and him discussed, as a bunch of stodgy old wizards that like to just hide out and read their books. You know, um, you you probably so yeah. So it's nice that um, right, you've, yeah. you've you've got them trolling, so they can be part of Dresden's world and still have been a part of it's this a world. A lot of genres. It's a lot of as, ge- as we've even brought up before eras, too is that eras, yeah. You know, Dresden or uh, sorry, Butcher. You know, he's like, if we can have you know the Hindu religion and the Christian religion and Greek mythology and uh, Shakespearean fairies all in the same world, you know, why can't we have you know a buddy cop film and the Wild Wild West and the uh, fantasy <laughs> very multicultural genres too? Yeah, very fair, yeah. very fair. And yeah, again, I like it. I thought he did a good job on it. I thought it did well. And it's um, a nice little intro piece to Lucia, who we will meet later on. And yeah, and to the Venatori and to the little hints of other yeah, things. Yeah, you know, it's, it's that no spoilers, but it's a nice nod to a lot may of or may, yeah. groundwork for what's coming. Exactly. This concludes our episode 2.1, The Wild West. Thank you for listening. Join us for the next episode where we cover the short story, Restoration of Faith. If you'd like to follow along with what order we follow, you can find our timeline listed on our website, macanalies.ca. There you can also find links to our other podcasts, social media, and other fun tidbits. Please subscribe if you like what you're hearing, and please consider supporting us through Patreon to keep the magic alive and to see more content. We are Free Flow Rambling. Conjure at it by your own risk. <laughs>